Here we go with another retro core, volume 11. Kicking off is Asuka Haku Niji Percento Limited. Better known as Asuka 120% Burning Fest Limited. So, what we got? Well, we got story mode, we got a versus game, ranking mode, and a configuration. So, well, let's kick it off with the story mode. Okay, you got 11 characters to choose from. All nice and cute. And believe it or not, even though this is a girly fighter, it isn't actually perverted like the most of them. Alright, one thing you'll notice straight away is that the animation is actually pretty decent. Now, usually games of this type, girly fighters, usually have really shit animation. You know, like one frame a second or something like that. They also have un you know, unbelievably uh, hard moves. You know, moves which just don't come out. Now, this game actually has combinations and specials. I can even do uh, counter attacks as well. Yeah, that's kicked Yep, and every time you finish your rounds, you get a little comment from your fighter. Now the game only uses three buttons. So you've got this punch here, which is a slow weak punch. And then you've got a fast punch, which, which is a... Uh, there you go, that one. And you've got a kick, which is a... Uh, in this player's case, actually a backhander. And that's the only buttons you've got. But believe it or not, that's all you need. With those three buttons and a couple of combination pad moves, you get out some pretty nice moves. As you can see, the computer's uh, kicking my ass with a 20 hit combo there. So as well as the versus mode, you know, the standard one versus uh, computer or one versus two player, you can actually watch the game. So you can pick your favorite fighters, so we'll pick uh, her, and who else can we pick? Well, we'll go with her. Now while Asuka 120% limited isn't the exactly the best uh, fighter on the Sega Saturn, it certainly is a good one. Well, a good one as far as girly fighters go. You know, it's got your combos in there, you've got counters like I mentioned, it looks pretty as well. It even has a few transparency effects in there. And considering it comes from someone like Phil and Cafe, I'm very impressed. I'm not sure you're impressed just watching it now. So if you do manage to find it, 
Retrocore certainly recommends picking it up. I want to give it a nice score of 7 out of 10. Accordion for the PC Engine, a very crazy shooter. So as you can see, the game features our little hero here, which is a little green dragon. And the aim of the game is to get uh, to fix the princess up again, get her back to her once beautiful self. And to do that, you have to fly around the magical land, blowing the shit out of all these weird creatures, and uh, collecting all the fruit which they drop. And basically, that's it, really. There's not actually much plot to this game, but. Um, then again, shooters don't really need plots, do they? The PC Engine, the graphics are very nice, you know, colourful and uh, quite big as well, sprite-wise. Audio is pretty nice as well. You can see here I picked up the little um, diamond, which uh, transforms my little dragon monster into a little tiny one. Which is handy because I can avoid the bad guys better then. And it also gives me a smart bomb as well. There aren't exactly many surprises in this game, to be honest. Um, it's pretty much a uh, straightforward uh, fly along shoot, shoot map. You know, there's no uh, particular nice graphic effects, even though the overall look of the game is, is quite pretty. But um, there's nothing that'll make you go, wow, you know? But saying that game's on all about graphics, about the fun you get from playing them. And this game is quite fun to play. It's, in, it's, it's not going to be uh, any parodious beta, but uh, as far as cutie uh, shoot ups go, this one's quite nice. It's all the three different weapons you can get. You can get the fire, which I had at the beginning, and then the lightning bolts, which I think you just saw. And there's this uh, blue one as well, which is like a laser, which is actually quite powerful. I'll try and get it here. There you go. This kicks ass, this does. So what sort of score are we going to give this game? Well, the PC Engine's absolutely jam-packed full of shooters, most of them being spacey type shooters. Um, so if I was comparing this to the spacey ones, um, I'd have to give it a pretty uh, average score of 7 out of 10 to be honest. But uh, as far as the cutie shooters go, um, this one's actually quite nice, it looks good, plays fairly well. No real surprises like I said, but um, I think it's worth an 8 out of 10. A space area on the mobile phone. Get ready. 
as you can see it's actually a quite nice conversion as well. Levels are scaled down quite a bit compared to the original version but for a mobile phone it's actually quite nice. It's smooth, it's fast and it plays just like the original. Yep, and it's even got all the bosses in there as well. Go and die, you little shit. I must say that I am actually quite impressed with this version of uh, Space Harrier on the mobile phone. The original version of Space Harrier on the mobile was really jerky and uh, quite bland as well. You know, I was missing an awful lot of stuff. But this version seems to be pretty much intact. True, the levels are shorter, like I said. But it does feature all 18 levels from the original arcade version. It's even with the bonus rounds as well. And all the speeches in there. And most of the music's in there. When you look at this game and uh, they compare it to the originals that were on the mass system and so on, it shows you how far technology has came along in the last 10 years or whatever. You know, playing Space Arrow on your mobile phone is quite an achievement. It may not look that special um, on this video, but uh, when you see it going on the mobile screens, on your mobile phone screen, you'd be quite impressed. So there you have it, there's space area there for the mobile phones, available in Japan right now. So if you're here, make sure you pick yourself up a copy. And if you're not here, well, you just have to pray that Sega release it in your area. You didn't even know there was a Labyrinth game for the Super Famicom. That's because there isn't. This is for the Famicom. It's me fucking up again. 
So featuring lots of, um, well, I was going to say good, but they're not actually the pretty poo. Featuring a couple of renditions of the music from the original movie. Uh, Labyrinth on the Famicom is probably best described as, um, I don't know, uh, a Gornet clone. Basically, you got this little guy here. Fuck knows who it is. I think it's a uh, Frogwart, whatever he was called. And you collect these little hearts, who you can give to uh, different characters. So we got uh, Hoggle Ludo and so on. It's not exactly following the plot of the movie. So anyway, uh, as I say, you got to pick up these hearts and uh, give them to uh, different characters. And we're to collect some treasure as well. And avoid these bloody little fairies that are chasing you. We can actually throw poison apples at them. There you go. Okay, now we can go through here. All good tunes from the movie. Now as you can see, it seems to be scrolling forever. This is probably to represent the uh, never-ending corridor from the movie. But you speak to this guy here, who possibly could be the talking worm, I think. And he teaches you that you can actually walk through walls. Which I sort of following the plot, I guess. What? Fucking magic. So into this section we go, and we've got to uh, avoid the enemies and so on. Throw more apples at them. And collect the treasure. As well as finding our way out the maze. And up the stairs to a different exit. Basically that's all there is to this game, just walk around the mazes, shooting the crap out of things, trying to survive, solve the odd little puzzle here and there. The thing is, it's got these bloody annoy controls where they keep stop moving. Every time you get hit or sometimes you won't go diagonal or whatever, it be really annoying. There's the key. So... It's not crap enough to be part of shite of the month, but it's not exactly a good game. So unfortunately, Labyrinth on the Famicom only gets a score of 5 out of 10. Unfortunate really, considering it's such a good movie. So enough with their mega hits, Space Harrier. They're moving on to the likes of Afterburner and Outrun. Later came Power Drift and this classic. This is Galaxy Force 2. What the hell happened to Galaxy Force 1? I don't know. Now, while this may look a bit uh, blocky and grainy these days, Back then it was the latest thing and it was really uh, close to, as, well, as close to reality as you could get back then. 
you have to admit, considering everything's a sprite, it does do a pretty good effect of making a um, you know, realistic 3D world. Even to this day, uh, Galaxy Force 2 still plays quite well. I remember playing it in the arcade years and years ago when I was just a kid. And um, I remember feeling pretty sick when I got off the machine. You know, it spins around and everything. Actually, this would have been one of those uh, games which would be nice in the 360 arcade cabinet. In fact, this stage reminds me of the ill fated Dreamcast game. Ice Force, which never did come out. Unfortunately, uh, the only way to play this game in its arcade form these days is due to emulation. Or you could buy the Sega Saturn version, which is actually pretty close to the arcade version. In fact, there is the arcade version. Um, except the resolution is a bit different. But apart from that, it's pretty much identical. So, classic bus from the past there with uh, Galaxy Force 2. Gonna give it a great retro score of 8 out of 10. Here we go with this week's uh, East to West, or this month's East to West, featuring Poyo Poyo and Kirby's Ghost Trap, better known as Kirby's Avalanche. Okay, so Poyo Poyo is the original game, Kirby's Avalanche is the bastardized western version. So here we go with the title screen to Poyo Poyo, as you can see, quite cute, nice little wobbly effects there, and we've got a nice little aerial down the bottom. Kirby's Avalanche! <laughs> Okay, and here we are with Kirby's Avalanche, the westernized version. I think this is the American one, uh, the English one's called Kirby's Ghost Trap. Um, as you can see, the background looks pretty much the same, but uh, Carbuncle, the little uh, snop long monster, has been changed for Kirby. Okay, so the uh, mode select screen here we are on uh, Poyo Poyo. We go to the options, all in English. It's got input, test, custom, and so on. And it's got some pretty good uh, voices and so on. Some little cute voices there, and it's actually got some um, pretty cool tunes as well.
including one of my favorite Puyo Puyo tunes of all times, Memories. So let's check out the Kirby's Avalanche option screen. So as you can see, uh, the mode select screen looks a lot more cuter and uh, more Mario-ish. And of course in English, since it's uh, the Western version. Option screen looks pretty much identical really, um, except the music and voice is all different. Yes! Excellent! Watch out! Here it comes! There you go, you got some pretty... Uh, wanky overacting there. Okay, uh, and the music's not as good either, but it's not too bad. Um, this is where my favourite tune should be. It's actually a bit um, on a cheapy side, but yeah, I suppose it's not bad for the type of game. Okay, so let's see uh, the actual game itself. Okay, so here we are back with Poyo Poyo. And you got a choice between uh, Yasashi, which is uh, easy, Futsu, which is normal, and uh, Muzui, which is uh, difficult to level up. So we'll just go with Futsu normal. Wow. Okay, so we've got uh, your characters there. Make sure you remember we've got a devil woman followed by a fish. Okay, and they give a little bit of a story. Which is completely uh, unreadable to us, well, to those who can't speak Japanese. And onto the game with the uh, classic Puyo Puyo tune. So, as you can see uh, at the bottom of the screen, you got Carbuncle there. He's the little uh, yellow monster type thing. God knows what he is, but he blows snot out of his nose. So, anything that blows snot out of its nose is entertaining enough. There you go. Go on, blow a snot bubble. There you go. Scared himself as well. So of course when you get a combination you get um, a little bit of speech, so let's try and get a combination up. There you go, she's got one up. And the little uh, transparent, transparent Poyo has come down to attack you. There we go, we'll get a combo up now. Uh, maybe not. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, Kirby's Avalanche. So the same thing, we've got easy, normal and hard level settings. But notice the characters are completely different. And just wait till you hear the fucking wank name they've given it. Puppy Brother Senior. Puppy Brother Senior. Fucking crap speech as well. So here we go, as uh, just like on the Japanese version, uh, they do their little uh, story. I've got to admit, uh, Kirby looks a bit naff there, I don't know what happened to Kirby. Looks like some bloody five year olds drawn him. So as you can see the actual playing background is different, it's uh, got a forest theme to it. And instead of having Carbuncle at the bottom of the screen we've got uh, Kirby himself. I don't think he'll blow any snot bubbles out though. The actual audio on Kirby's Avalanche just does seem a lot more muffled as well than the uh, Japanese version. I don't know why. Considering it's, but they both use the same uh, sound engine. So let's take a look at the uh, how to play section. So as you, as you can see the Japanese version comes straight from the arcade machine. Uh, shows you uh, the uh, joystick and the uh, button. This is identical to the arcade machine's um, how to play section. No difference whatsoever. Same music, same graphics. And here we go with the uh, Kirby's Avalanche version. As you can see, they replaced the joystick with the god awful American. SNES pad with those uh, swizzle colored buttons and um, the music's different so which version of the game do I prefer? well um, to be honest I'll, I will go with the Japanese version <laughs> like, uh, like in most cases 
The uh, westernised version isn't that bad. Uh, the characters don't seem as pe- as appealing as the uh, Japanese version, but they're not as exactly um, off-putting. Um, the main gripe I have with the western version is the uh, shitty speech and um, the music just doesn't seem as good and it, it seems pretty muffled. But uh, overall, it's not too bad. Uh, Super Famicom SNES owners are quite lucky, really. Uh, they could have ended up with something like a, um, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bee Machine, which is a complete diabolical fuck-up compared to the original Mega Drive Puyo Puyo 2. But, there you have it anyway. <laughs> Presented by Sega. <laughs> hey, we are the Sonic Team. Some of the amigos, 2000. Least in Japan only. So what's different about this version compared to the other version? Well, let's see, we've got arcade mode, we've got original mode, we've got this mode which I quite like, survival mode, and then we've got the uh, challenge mode, then we've got mini games, and we've got a ranking, so no ranking, sorry, a training, and we've got the internet, and of course options. So what sort of mini games does uh, Samba 2000 have? Okay, well this one we've got uh, a volleyball game. Just play one player mode because I'm being a bit of a sad git. So basically, you just use your maracas to um, bounce off the balls. And I won, that was easy. Man player two shot. And there are other mini games which you can get. So arcade mode is the same as normal, so let's check out the original. So you got a puzzle version. 
sorry, not puzzle version, a hustle version, and the original. So I'll show you the original version first, and two player modes, which is a love love mode. See, hard. Lost my bloody skill now. So you'll have to excuse the lack of commentary. <laughs> I have to use all my concentration on doing this bloody game. I'm actually doing pretty shit here. So as you can see, if you fail, your rank goes down. So at the moment it's on D and now it's on E. And if you go solo, all your friends leave you, as you can see. And your monkey starts taking a fit trying to <laughs> make a comeback. Well, I think we'll just let him fail. Okay, so here we are doing the hustle mode. And I can't figure it out for the life of me what the hell you meant to do. Hi, 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 hi. So sometimes the little uh, guy icon will say to do different positions with the um, maracas, which I find extremely difficult. So how many songs does Summer the Amigo 2000 actually have? Well it's got a whopping over 40 songs, I think it's 44 to be honest, including some classics such as uh, the good old getting pissed and getting back up again, Tumba Wumba with Thumb Pumping, not Thumb Pumping, <laughs> Tub thumping. It's got a stupid title anyway. And then you got good old um, shitty Vicky Mongo. Sh shitty Mongo. <laughs> shitty. Yeah, Vicky Martin. May as well be shitty Vicky Mongo. And then from there we got a lot of Sega music after Wedding March. We've got the uh, piss ball song there from um, Sonic Adventure, and then you got the Sonic CD song, of course Sonic Super Racing, or Super Sonic Racing, which we uh, heard before, Burning Hearts from Burning Rangers, We've got the Night's nice theme there, After Burners, something from Outrun, something from Fancy Zone, Rain to Heroes theme, more Burning Rangers, all oh, the crap from Sonic 2. Sonic Adventure 2 I should say. And we got the classic Let Mum Sleep from Jet Set Radio. Oh and Daytona, let's go away. So what sort of score do we give our Samba de Amigo 2000? Well if you got the original Samba de Amigo on the Sega Dreamcast then maybe this is not worth getting unless you really want the extra songs. The extra bonus games are nice, but they're not really worth buying the game for. Um, to be honest though, I would actually pass on getting the original Samba de Amigo and just get this one instead, because it features all the songs from the original, plus the extras and the extra little games and the hustle mode, or the hassle mode, whatever you want to call it. I call it the pain in the ass mode, actually. 
So, um, we're going to give some of the Amigo version 2000 a very nice score of 8 out of 10. If you're using the pad, that is. If you're using the maracas, 10 out of 10. A guaranteed classic party game. Get fun going all day long. Junior. Original Tempo started out life on the 32X because the 32X was doomed. Uh, tempo then moved on to the Sega Saturn. A Super Tempo. That was basically the same shitty game with a few extras in. So, how's this Game Boy, uh, not Game Boy, sorry, Game Gear miniature, miniature scaled down version like? Well, as you can see, it looks pretty good. Tempo himself isn't rendered anymore, he's actually a hand drawn sprite. But he still looks quite nice. And for a Game Gear game, it's very colourful. Animation wise, Tempo also looks pretty good. Whoops, wrong way there. And even controls fairly decent as well. So to kill enemies you can either kick the crap out of them like this Oops, not like that There you go, take that Or you can stomp on the heads Like this well, Actually you can't stomp on them, there you go Now as you can see tempo is looking a bit dull here and That's because the lights have gone off So if you knock on this flower here Becomes all bright and tempo cheers up. God knows why though. Tempo can also throw out uh, musical notes at his enemies, but these don't actually kill them, they just stun the enemy. As you see here, oops, killed them. As you can see to uh, the top left hand side of the screen, we've got a power bar. Once that starts flashing, Tempo can do a little groovy dance, which uh, renders the uh, enemies helpless. Here we go, we'll try on this little pole sword. Go on, Tempo, shake your thing. Poor little bugger turns into a coin and Tempo nicks him. So let's take a look at the bonus areas when you finish a level. So I've got to kill the boss first. Fairly easy, just run and uh, dive into him. I'll kill him. There you go. Come here, little bugger. Hey, that's him gone. Tempo gets down with his girl and just a little groove. That looked a bit dodgy. So, uh, with your coins, you can play this really crappy match the tune game. Well, that was hard. Door. Okay, door so okay. And actually it goes like this for quite some time. So um, I'm just going to make a mistake. There you go, thank god we can get off it now. So as I mentioned earlier, the uh, Mega Drive and 32X versions of this game are pretty dull. And to be honest, this game is a bit dull as well. 
if it was on a normal console, but as far as handheld platformers go, especially for the Game Gear, this one's not actually that bad. Don't be expecting a Sonic fast paced action game, but if you're after a little something to play, platformer wise, you can do a lot worse than by uh, Tempo uh, Junior. So Retro Core is very happy to give the score out of 10, a nice 7. You wanna die? Why's that? Cause your big sister PS2 said you weren't man enough to fulfill her anymore. Ah, uh, don't worry, mate. We'll put an end to your misery. We just ran over the little shit in the car. Let's see what damage we got. Well, got a bit of a crack here. Door still opens though. See the lens seems to be okay inside. And um, around the back, well, the flaps fell off, as you can see. But that's about it. Just a quick look at the bottom. As you can see, it's uh, pretty badly squashed there. Let's run the little shit over a bit more. Still scratched. He's looking a bit cracked at the front. And the bottom's a right mess. Okay, time for some more punishment. Oop. Draw doesn't open. What's that, mate? You want to see what it's like to fly? Well, I'm sure I can sort that out for you. Yeah, I'm sure we can sort that out. Well, here you go, mate. Here's your chance to fly. Sure is a beautiful day for it. Oh, you want to go down there? Okay. Ooh, did I jump a canal? Looks like you've lost an eye there. There it is. Oh, 
Oh, you're still close. Still not looking too bad around the back. Whoop, you got a big gash there. Oh, you have one little hard bastard, you, haven't you? I'll tell you what we'll do. Give you a bit of a stamping. Let's have a look. Whoop, I think your jaw's done in. Yep. Definitely be on the fuck side there. But your main casing's still okay. Whoop. I really fancy like a game of footy. I haven't got my ball though, so I'll uh, just have to use this. Right, volley time. Ready? Whee! I'm fucking toe. I think it's time to go to the sea. Well, what's that mate? You want to ski? Down there? Okay, be my guess. Well, you're not very good at skiing, are you? Off you go. And a bit more. Hey mate, look where we're going. Your favourite place, the beach. I'm sure we'll have some fun down here. Yep, ah, oh, one twat there. So much for them um, setting you on fire. Can't do that if that bugger's over there. Looks like it's your lucky day, PlayStation. Well, Mr. PlayStation, just what are we gonna do with you? Can't set you on fire because there's somebody over there. Hmm. How about I kick you down the stairs? Whoops, it's gone. Yep, oh, there he is. Let's have a look how he's look how he's shaping up. Well, you can see he's still got his button missing of course. What? Oh, he's actually bleeding. Nice one. Well, all I can say is that um, you're one tough bastard, Mr. PlayStation. So, I think you deserve a funeral in the sea. That's right, you little shit. Over there. We love you, PlayStation. Just will not fuck off, will ya? Go on you, it's you little bastard. Do one. What's that PlayStation crew? You wanna die? Why's that? Cause your big sister PS2 said you weren't man enough to fulfill her anymore. Ah, uh, don't worry mate, we'll put an end to your misery.
we go, we just ran over the little shit in the car. Let's see what damage we got. Well, got a bit of a crack here. Door still opens though. See the lens seems to be okay inside. And um, around the back well the flaps fell off as you can see. That's about it. Just a quick look at the bottom. As you can see it's uh, pretty badly squashed there. Let's run, let's run the little shit over a bit more. He's still scratched. He's looking a bit cracked at the front. And the bottom's a right mess. Okay, time for some more punishment. Oops. God, there's an open. What's that, mate? You want to see what it's like to fly? Well, I'm sure I can sort that out for you. Yeah, I'm sure we can sort that out. Well, here you go, mate. Here's your chance to fly. Sure is a beautiful day for it. Oh, you want to go down there? Okay. Ooh, die job, no. Whoops, it looks like you've lost an eye there. There it is. Oh, you're still close. Still not looking too bad around the back. Whoop, you got a big gash there. Oh, you have one little hard bastard, you, aren't you? I'll tell you what we'll do. Give you a bit of a stamping. Let's have a look. Whoop, I think your jaw's done in. Yep, definitely be on the fuck side there. But your main casing's still okay. Whoop. I really fancy like a game of footy. I haven't got my ball though, so I'll uh, just have to use this. Right, volley time. Ready? Whee! I'm fucking toe. I think it's time to go to the sea. Well, what's that, mate? You want to ski? Down there? Okay, be my guess. Well, you're not very good at skiing, are you? Off you go. And a bit more. Hey mate, look where we're going. Your favourite place. The beach. I'm sure we'll have some fun down here. Yep, ah, oh, one twat there. So much for them um, setting you on fire. Can't do that if that bugger's over there. Looks like it's your lucky day, PlayStation. Well, Mr. PlayStation, just what are we gonna do with you? Can't set you on fire because there's somebody over there. Hmm. How about I kick you down the stairs? Whoops, it's gone. Ah, 
Yeah, there he is. Let's have a look how he's look, how he's shaping up. Well, you can see he's still got his bone missing, of course. What? Oh, he's actually bleeding. Nice one. Well, all I can say is that um, you want tough bastard, Mr. PlayStation. So, I think you deserve a funeral in the sea. That's right, little shit. Over there. We love you, PlayStation. Just will not fuck off, will ya? Go on, you Italian little bastard. Do one. Shite of the month time! And actually this week's Shite of the month is on the Sharp X68000! Can such a shite game appear on the Sharp X68000? X the, the machine that brings us perfect arcade conversions. Well, you bet your ass I can. This is Ballast 2. And it's a fucking disgrace, look at that. I know this is not some sort of dodgy emulation that's causing uh, the problems. This game is a fucking mess. The controls are diabolical. As you can see, Yuko sort of just jumps and stops there because she hits the platform. And she controls like she's on some sort of bloody string. And look at that, I'm fucking dead.
Force 4 for the Sega Mega Drive. If there was ever a shootout there to take your doubts out about the Mega Drive being a good shooting machine, then this is the one. Just look how fucking big the scrolling of the screen is. There you go, you got one screen there, two screens and three screens up. Now oh, that's big. And look at the amount of parallax like, scrolling in there. It's gotta be at least 10 layers. Yep, Thunder Force 4 is the showcase of Mega Drive shooting games. They managed to make the Mega Drive sound really good apart from Sega and uh, Yuzo Kushiro. Those special effects there, nice wavies. Go get ready to shit your pants. Boss time. One great thing about Thunder Force 4 is that because the screen is so big, there's actually uh, basically two paths you can take through the game. So if you fly up here near the top, you'll see things which you wouldn't see near the bottom, such as power-ups and different enemies and whatever. So it's always worth checking out in the uh, different uh, planes of the playing field. Because you could be missing out on power-ups coming down down the bottom. Or you could be missing them up at the top. So it really adds that extra challenge to the game. You know, you can't just stay in one place, you've got to actually explore the area. There you go, I've got my shield now. So as you can see at the uh, top, I'm using the blade at the moment. There are a total of five weapons to get, which get powered up even more powerful once you've complete level four and you get your ship upgraded. Thunder Force 4 being the excellent game it is, isn't without its problems. Sometimes it can suffer from a bit of slowdown, but then again it sort of helps in uh, dodging all the bullets. Whoops. I'm sorted now, I've got my hunter. Thunder Force 4 being the excellent shooter it is, it does have its fair amount of problems as well. The main one being uh, is the slowdown. Some parts of the game can slow down like hell, but basically that's because the game really is pushing the Mega Drive. One of the more interesting levels on this game is this one. Because the enemies actually appear in the background and the foreground. 
As you can see the little targets on the screen there. They're actually from the enemies trying to shoot the shit out of me here in the front of me. I'm hiding behind them now. Oh, yeah. Also, this weapon, which is the freeway, it's actually pretty good as well. Basically, it shoots in uh, two directions. Three, three sets coming out in uh, whichever way you're pushing. Actually, the opposite direction in which you're pushing. And one shot coming out in the direction in which you are pushing. So once you've finished the standard uh, four levels, you go on to this, the fifth level. Which looks very, very pretty. And from completing this level, you get your actual uh, super power up. Oh, but look, it's a big ass ship level. You've got a bit of assistance on this level as well. Don't seem to do much good though. Thank God you can't have to dodge them bullets. Go on guys, kick his ass. Oh, they're all dead. Here comes the power up. One, lads. So by holding down this, uh, oh sorry, by not firing, this weapon will charge up to a super blast like this, and I get myself killed as well. And I've lost it. Handy for taking out bosses. Notice the beautiful water effect there. The waves are very pretty. One of my favourite stages on the game, this one. Just look at that fire. Whoa. Loads of little hidden extras in this stage, which is extra lives and shields and so on. So you've got to make sure you travel the whole uh, height and uh, depth of the level. So anyway, that's uh, Thunder Force 4 for the uh, Sega Mega Drive, one of Technosoft's best shooters, and one of the best shooters on the Sega Mega Drive, and definitely one of the best 16-bit shooters. If you got yourself a Mega Drive, make sure you pick this game up, you won't be disappointed. Um, our viewers in America are probably thinking, what the fuck is Thunder Force 4, since over there it's called Lightning Force, God knows why. So, all bow down and pray to the almighty powers of Technosoft and thank them for bringing us such a great game.